It is Tuesday, the 26th of April, and this is Love Notes, daily devotions from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Welcome. We continue with the amazing story of Queen Esther, this literary parable about God's providence that's found in the Old Testament. Yesterday, we heard about how Queen Esther had used her position to save her people. She had been God's agent, vanquishing the evil plot of Haman and saving her uncle Mordecai, who'd raised her. Today, the story continues. Now that Haman has been hanged on his own gallows, the whole household and all the riches of Haman's house are given to the queen. Esther has control over Haman's relatives and household, and she gives the administration of them over to Mordecai, the mortal enemy of Haman. Now there's a turn of justice, don't you think? This reveals to us something that we see in the Psalms and Proverbs, how God will undermine those who are intent on doing evil. It may take a long time, and it may not happen today, but God will indeed do this. Esther now speaks a second time, and the king holds out his golden scepter and gives it to Esther so that she can do what she wants to do. The king has already taken the signet ring that you'd use to sign documents, to stamp in the hot wax, and given it to Mordecai instead of Haman. So Mordecai now has a kind of governorship where he can act on behalf of the king. With the golden scepter in his hand, the queen dares to ask again, Please allow us, O king, in your name, to send letters and correspondence out to all of the corners of your kingdom and tell them to stop the plan to kill the Jews. And so that's indeed what happened. King Ahasuerus says to Queen Esther and to the Jew Mordecai, See, I have given Esther the house of Haman, and they have hanged him on the gallows because he plotted to lay hands on the Jews. You may write as you please with regard to the Jews in the name of the king and seal it with the king's ring. For an edict written in the name of the king and sealed with the king's ring cannot be revoked. In other words, the king backs a plan now to stem the Holocaust that will happen to the Jewish people all across the Persian Empire. And so the secretaries are summoned, the letters go out, and the people of Judea are saved in their exile. God has not forgotten the people as they were sent away to exile. God has not been somehow blotted out by Persian gods. God is still active, even if acting behind the scenes, even if never named, even if never worshipped. God is working to bring about the promises made to God's people to pass. God delivers them through a young orphan girl who has now become queen of Persia. God delivers them through an uncle who had a compassionate heart and took in his niece. God has delivered them from the violence and the terror, terror that was just about to befall them because of the hands of Haman. God has also, the wisdom of Israel would say, brought judgment upon those who will do evil to God's plans. There's an important message here that God is indeed working when God doesn't even seem to be present. When we look at the halls of government and the nations of the world and it seems like God is nowhere to be found, never be fooled. God is working the providence of God is unfolding, and God will indeed turn evil on its head and bring justice. Let us pray. Holy and mighty God, you used a young girl and her loving uncle to save your people. Help us to remember always, Lord, that you're working behind the scenes in and through the fabric of history to bring about good from the ashes of evil. Help us to trust you, Lord, knowing that even if we can't see you or speak your name, you're with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.